Hi, boys and girls. My name is Mrs. Bustard, and I'm the school counselor at Lyles Crouch Traditional Academy. Today, we're going to be talking about staying healthy. So, what do you do to stay healthy? Maybe you eat healthy foods every day. I like to start my day with a banana for breakfast and eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Or maybe you thought about getting a good night's sleep <sighs> every single night. Hmm. What other ways can you think of to stay healthy? Maybe exercising? I like to go for a run and move my body in healthy ways. I know I always feel better after I get some exercise. And right now, it's especially important that we wash our hands with soap and water to keep ourselves healthy and the people around us healthy. Do you have some of those healthy habits? Well, just like it's important to keep our bodies healthy, it's important to take care of our mental health. Hmm, I'm giving you a clue right now, but do you know what mental health is? Mental health is taking care of our minds, taking care of our feelings. Our mental health impacts how we think, how we feel, and how we act. When we take good care of our mental health, we feel better, we make better choices, and we think happier thoughts. So today, we're gonna start with some mindfulness. That means slowing down to pay attention to what's around us. Mindfulness helps our mental health because mindfulness helps us to slow down and feel calmer, more focused, and happier. And then we'll have a few lessons about our feelings and coping skills. Coping skills are the ways we deal with big feelings in healthy and safe ways. So I hope you enjoy this video and that you take time to practice all these skills because the more you practice, the better and better and better you'll get. breathing. Star breathing is all about using our breath and our finger to slow down and refocus our mind. So I'm going to show you how to do it and then you can do it with me. You can either draw a star or just imagine one. Usually I would trace a star on my hand or on a table in front of me, but today I'm going to do it in the air so you can see me. I would put my finger on the corner of the star where it says the number one. And I'm gonna trace the star in the direction of the arrow. While I'm tracing it, I'm gonna breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth slowly, just like this. In and out. In, out. Want to try it with me? I'm going to try and go even slower. Get your finger ready. Let's trace that star. Remember, in through your nose, out through your mouth. How are you feeling now? Do you feel calmer? When we take the time to breathe slowly, especially when we use our finger to help, it refocuses our brain. I bet that whatever you were thinking about before we started isn't on your mind anymore. The next mindfulness activity we can use is using our five senses to notice what's around us right now. 
This is a great way to slow down. And again, you can do it anytime, anywhere. So our five senses are what we see, what we hear, what we feel or touch, what we smell, and what we taste. So what do you see right now? You can see me. Maybe behind me, you see my flower or my candle. What else do you see around you? I see the window to look outside. Maybe you see some people around you. What else? What do you hear? I know you hear my voice. If I listen closely, I can hear a clock ticking. You can also hear some water running. Somebody must be washing their hands somewhere. What do you hear around you? Maybe you hear some people talking, music, animals, cars or airplanes outside. I'll be quiet for a second so that you can notice what you hear. What do you feel? Are you sitting on something hard or soft? Are the clothes that you're wearing itchy, rough, cozy? Is there anything in your hand? I'm holding this ball, squishy, but also bumpy. Notice if whatever is in your hand is smooth or rough. What about what you smell right now? I just clean so I can smell the cleaning product. Maybe you smell something that was cooked a little bit ago. Notice the smells around you. And the last one might be kind of tricky, but what do you taste? Maybe you just had a snack or something to eat. Was it salty like a pretzel? Was it sweet like chocolate? When we take time to slow down and notice things from each of our five senses, we can focus our brain and we can feel calmer by just paying attention to what's around us at any moment. Now, I have one more and I saved the best for last. The last one is to give thanks. Think about what you're thankful for and maybe share it with someone too. Right now, with school being closed, I miss seeing my students. I also miss seeing family, friends, and other loved ones. So it might be a little tougher to give thanks when we're having a difficult time, but it's so important. Something that I'm thankful for right now is technology that lets us all stay connected when we have to be apart. What are you thankful for right now? Can you think of one thing? Maybe two? Maybe even three? I challenge you to share those with somebody today. Now, mindfulness is just like reading, writing, math, riding a bike, swimming. The more you practice, the better you get. So I hope that you'll take time to teach someone around you one of these mindful activities today and to continue to practice them each day so that you get better and better. And that way, when you have a difficult situation, you'll be even better at bouncing back or being resilient. So what does the weather outside have in common with your feelings? Well, the weather changes a lot. Sometimes it might be cold and cloudy in the morning, but by the afternoon, the sun has come out, the clouds have gone away, and it's a beautiful day to go outside. Just like the weather can change, your feelings can change. Can you think of a time when you had a feeling and it changed? I know that when I was getting ready to make this video, I couldn't find something that I needed and I felt frustrated. But I took a deep breath 
And then I looked one more place and I found what I needed. I felt a lot calmer. That feeling of being frustrated really disappeared. Another way that feelings are like the weather is that we can use different weather words to describe how we're feeling. So maybe we would use the word sunny to describe a happy feeling. Maybe that happy feeling you get when you go outside on a bright sunny day. Or maybe we think of feeling like it's raining or even storming out. What kind of feeling might you compare to a rainy day? Maybe sadness, like crying in the rain? Or what about a stormy day? That makes me think of being angry or even scared. So how are you feeling now that school's out? Maybe some of you are feeling sunny. You're enjoying extra time with your family and having fun doing activities that you didn't have as much time for before. Maybe some of you are feeling rainy. You're missing your friends, your teacher, and especially your favorite school counselor. Maybe you're feeling stormy. You're scared about what's gonna happen or angry that we're not able to see each other and learn the way that we're used to. Or maybe, just maybe, like the weather, your feelings are changing. No matter what you're feeling, it's important to think about and talk about them. So tell a grown up today how you're feeling. You can use weather or feelings words. I'll be back with more videos to give you some ideas with what you can do when you have those rainy, cloudy, stormy, and windy feelings. I hope you have a sunny day. In this video, we're gonna talk about how our bodies can help us figure out how we're feeling. Sometimes you might not know that you have a big feeling, but your body can give you clues. When I'm feeling nervous, my heart starts beating really fast. My hands get a little bit sweaty and my body feels like it has a little bit of extra energy. What happens to you when you're feeling nervous? What about when you're feeling angry? How does your body feel when you're calm and happy? Let me introduce you to Moody the monster. Can you say, hi, Moody? What do you notice about Moody the monster? You probably see that he has butterflies in his stomach. So what does that tell us about how Moody is feeling? When someone says they have butterflies in their stomach, it means their stomach feels a little different, maybe like there's a little flutter inside. Usually, that's our body telling us that we're feeling nervous, anxious, or worried about something. I'm going to be talking to you about coping skills. Hmm, what are coping skills? Coping skills are the things that we do when we have an uncomfortable feeling. We know that all feelings are normal and all feelings are okay. But there are some feelings that aren't very comfortable. Feelings like being angry or scared, kind of like stormy weather, or maybe feeling really sad, like a rainy day. So What are some things that you do when you're feeling angry, sad, scared, or nervous? There are healthy, safe, and helpful things that we can do, but there are also unhelpful, unhealthy, and unsafe things we can do. So today, I'm going to show you some different examples of things that people might do when they have an uncomfortable feeling. And we are going to decide if that's a healthy, safe, and helpful thing to do or not. 
Let's get started. Do you think that taking deep breaths is a healthy, safe, and helpful thing to do when you have an uncomfortable feeling or not? Yes, taking deep breaths is a great example of a way to help you feel calmer and more in control when you have an uncomfortable feeling. Hmm, what about stomping your feet? Is that going to be a healthy, safe, and helpful way to take care of our feelings or not? Not. Stomping your feet isn't going to make you feel better, and it's not going to make the people around you feel very good either. Hmm. What about telling yourself, I can handle it? Do you think that that's a healthy, safe, and helpful thing to do or not? Yes. Telling yourself that you can handle it or using some other positive self-talk is a great way to help yourself feel calmer, less stressed, less angry, and less sad. Hmm. How about pouting? Healthy, safe, and helpful or not? Not. I can tell you that my four-year-old son does a lot of pouting, and it doesn't help him to feel better. It also doesn't help the people around him to feel good either. Let's do two more. How about counting to 10 slowly? Healthy, safe, and helpful or not? That's a healthy way to calm down and feel better. Last one. What about throwing something? Healthy, safe, and helpful or not? Occasionally, there might be something that's safe to throw, maybe like playing catch to get some energy out. But most of the time, throwing something is not a healthy, safe, or helpful way to feel better. The more you think about and talk about your feelings, the better you'll get at recognizing all the different feelings you have. And the more you practice healthy, safe, and helpful ways to take care of those uncomfortable feelings, the better you'll get. What positive coping skill will you practice today? In this video, we're gonna be talking about changes. Hmm, what are some things that change? Well, the weather changes. It can go from cloudy and cool to bright and sunny in just one day. What else? The seasons change. Goes from cold in the winter, and then we move into spring before we get to my favorite season, summer. And you're changing. As you get older, you grow. And you also learn new things and are able to do more things by yourself. So what does change feel like? Some changes feel exciting. We look forward to them. Some changes are a little bit scary. and We don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes we know that a change is coming and sometimes we don't. There are a lot of changes that are happening for us right now. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to handle changes. On your screen, there are three pictures to give you ideas for ways that you can deal positively with changes. The first picture shows a boy with a chameleon on his shoulder. What do you think that represents? They're showing us that you can take slow, deep breaths to help stay calm when things are changing. What do you think the question mark represents? The question mark reminds us that it's very important to ask questions. Sometimes when things are changing, we don't know what to expect. By asking questions, it can help us to feel better and more confident. What do you think the third picture 
of the child and the grown up is representing. It reminds us that it's important to talk to grown ups about how we're feeling. Do you have a trusted grown up that you can talk to? Even when lots of things are changing, some things will stay the same. A lot of things are changing in my world right now, but I still live in the same house with the same people and I enjoy doing the same things. What are some things that have stayed the same for you? I know one, you still have teachers, friends, and a school counselor from Lyle's Crouch who love you and care about you. When things are changing, it's important to remember that change is normal. It's also important to stop and think about how you're feeling and share it with an adult. And last, it's important to remember that even when lots of things are changing, there are lots of things that stay the same. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how focusing on things that are in your control can help you feel calmer and happier. So sometimes when we're feeling nervous, stressed, angry, scared, or worried, we're spending a lot of time thinking about things that we can't control. That doesn't help us feel any better. Today's activity is gonna give us a chance to practice figuring out what are the things that we can control and what are the things that we can't control? So let's start with the weather. Can you control the weather? I don't think so. I know I can't. Hmm, what about your own thoughts and your attitude? Is that something you can control? Sometimes it's hard, but yeah, we can control the thoughts and the things that we tell ourselves in our head. So even though I can't control if it's going to be a rainy day or not, I can control what I tell myself about that. Maybe on a rainy day, I say, well, I was really looking forward to going outside, but it's the perfect day to try a new recipe or play a new game. How about other people's words. Can we control what other people say to us or about us? I don't think so. How about our reactions? Maybe how we handle what other people say or do. This is a hard one, but with practice, maybe a deep breath or two, we can control how we react. I'll put that in my control. Hmm. What about mistakes we've made in the past? Is that something we can control? I don't think so. Hopefully we learn from our mistakes, but we can't go back in time and change what's already happened. Hmm. How about if school is open or closed, or how long school is closed. Is that something we can control? Not something you or I can control. Hmm. But what about putting forth your best effort in school? Is that something you can control? Yeah, notice I didn't say, getting perfect grades, or getting 100% on every test. Just said putting forth your best effort. Now, when we focus on those things that are in our control, we can help ourselves to put forth our best effort, control our reactions. And when we focus on the things that are in our control, it helps us to feel calmer, more in control, and happier. Next time you're feeling stressed, worried, angry, see if you can focus on what's in your control and notice how that makes you feel. So let's review. Hmm. We know 
that we stay healthy by eating our healthy foods, washing our hands. But what is mental health again? That's right, taking care of our mind and our feelings. We take care of our mental health by doing things that we enjoy and talking about our feelings. Hmm. We also talked about mindfulness. Do you remember what mindfulness is? That's right. Mindfulness is slowing down to notice what's around you. Mindfulness can help you to feel calm and focused. It's great to practice mindfulness all the time so that you get better at it. But mindfulness is especially important when we feel stressed or angry or sad or overwhelmed. What was your favorite mindfulness activity? My favorite is using my five senses to notice what's around me. It really helps me to stop and pay attention. We also talked about our feelings. So why is it so important to recognize and talk about our feelings? Well, in order to stay mentally healthy, it's important to not keep our feelings inside, but to share them. And we can share them by writing, by drawing, or by talking to someone we trust. Who is a person in your life that you trust and can always talk to about your feelings? For me, I know I can always talk to my mom about how I'm feeling. She'll listen and she'll make me feel better. Now, we also talked about a lot of coping skills. Coping skills are just the skills or tools that we use to take care of our feelings, take care of our emotions, and take care of our mental health. So do you have a favorite coping skill? Maybe it's something we learned today, or maybe it's something you already do. Maybe you love drawing, exercising, or maybe one of the things we talked about today is something you want to try. Maybe you want to try focusing on things that are in your control. Maybe you want to try finding a quiet place when you get frustrated. No matter what coping skills you like, it's important to practice. Just like with reading, writing, math, and riding a bike, the more we practice, the better we get. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure to make healthy choices today. Get a good night's sleep, exercise, eat healthy foods, but just as important, take care of your mental health by practicing mindfulness, talking about your feelings, and doing something that you enjoy. Miss Bustard here, saying goodbye for now.